There's one perfect thing, that's Bitcoin. The only physical bare instrument that can move and settle at the speed of light. Decentralized, ethically sound, technically sound, economically sound money. It's cheaper, it's faster, it's more global, it's more inclusive, it's more innovative. And it's just the new way we should be conducting payments and transfers of value. So why Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency as we know it that's ever been created. And uh, it's also the largest by market capitalization. It's the sort of the most tried and true in a way. It's also the cryptocurrency that has the least amount of regulatory scrutiny. The US government, for instance, has pretty clearly recognized it as a commodity. Uh, that being said, uh, Bitcoin is uh, the most decentralized cryptocurrency as we know it, which means that it's sort of the farthest out of control by any one central party. Bitcoin itself is a proven asset. There's no question there's demand for it, but you can't get that demand. You can't unleash the spigot of demand without policy, without regulation. Wait, what's Bitcoin used for? Why is it important? There are a lot of ways to actually use Bitcoin, but I would say they all derive from a few different properties. And the point of the architecture of Bitcoin is really to allow you to take control of your own finances. Um, what do you do from that point? It becomes you know, a lot more personal based upon you know, what any given person wants to do, whether it's uh, trading, transacting, just saving. Um, but the point is really to, as they say, be your own bank. Be your own bank? What do you mean by that? We start to get into the minutia of how modern finance actually works but basically you know unless you're using uh cash or coins or some like hard currency that you're physically handing to someone pretty much all modern transactions go through some sort of financial system of intermediaries and basically it's the banking system you know when you want to spend money out of your bank account you aren't the one actually uh, sending that money. You're asking your bank to send the money. And when we say send money, we mean basically update their accounting records and then asking other banks to update their accounting records to you know credit and debit the transactions. Payments as we know it today are what I describe as debt promises. It's a concept from Mike Brock. What that means is that paper dollars, that the US dollar cannot settle and move at the speed of light. When I walk into a Chipotle, when I swipe my card, dollars aren't hopping out of my pocket and into the register. What's actually happening is the banks are promising each other, Jack's good for it. Jack's good for it. Let him eat the burrito. We'll settle later. And who bears the cost of the debt? It's the merchant. They tax the merchant to fund this revolving door of credit. And that's why. So what have banks been doing in the last 60 years if they haven't been innovating? They've been building very sophisticated revolving doors of credit. Now, the innovation, the boom, aha moment is when you message to a merchant that Jack wants to pay for something, you actually now can send along with it a digital bear instrument that actually is money in a physical form, but it's digital and it's called Bitcoin. And it can actually hop out of my pocket and into Chipotle's cash register. And that's the innovation is that the merchant now does not need to trust banks and build credit and debt associations to please give me Jack's money in 30 days because he said he was good for it when he bought this burrito. So when you're being your own bank, you're not asking any other third party to be updating your records. You're actually updating those records yourself. And the way that we do this on Bitcoin is through cryptography and through a whole network of nodes that are keeping track of those accounting records where you can basically tell the network and prove to the network that you want to move money from one account to another. Okay, you've told me what Bitcoin is used for. So what makes it valuable? 
what you're really asking is, you know, what are the variables that affect demand? And that really comes down to sentiment. It's affected by many different macroeconomic factors. Uh, all of the markets right now are, are very uh, confused and not really sure what's going to be happening in the, the near to medium term future. So I really want to divide Bitcoin as an asset. This is an asset that has a fixed supply, a known issuance, a known monetary policy, and a sufficiently distributed network Work where you know it will never change. Ultimately, any type of commodity, and I would say Bitcoin is a commodity much like gold, oil, uh, other uh, types of physical assets, whereas Bitcoin is digital, but it's, it's all still traded based upon supply and demand. Now, one kind of unique aspect of Bitcoin is the supply is very well known. It's actually, it's a part of the protocol and the network that we know pretty much exactly what the supply is going to be for the rest of time or the rest of Bitcoin's existence. It's pretty clear that Bitcoin's the future of money and lightning is the future of payments. And if you're gonna do payments and transactions high speed, you're gonna need a base layer that's uh, ethically sound, economically sound, and technically sound, and that's what Bitcoin is. But then billions and billions of transactions are gonna go on a layer two like Lightning, which is an open permissionless ethical protocol. The Lightning Network is um, something that's been built out for the past five or six years. So we're, we're seeing the uh, mainstream adoption kind of that I was referring to tend to happen on that layer because you can actually achieve much lower level of fees, much faster transactions, uh, basically making it a lot more accessible to the average person. And, you know, we're, we're seeing all types of companies start to build on top of that. I'm not advocating for people to spend Bitcoin. I'm advocating that how do you actually transport value at the speed of light? I mean, this is a payments network that could move value anywhere in the world at no cost in real time. And anyone can build on top of it. It's more, more inclusive, more innovative. And so I'm just saying if I wanted to, for example, move dollars to euros, I could take dollars out of your Chase account, turn it into Bitcoin, zip it across the planet in real time. It's the only physical bare instrument that can move and settle at the speed of light and then convert it back into euros. To the consumer that's remitting money or to the consumer that's buying Chipotle, they don't know Bitcoin is involved. Wow, so Bitcoin is valuable even when no one knows it's involved? When the world got a global communications network, we call it the internet. When I open an email, nowhere in that email do I have to specify, oh, this is a cross-border email. This is an email to flirt with a chick. This is an email that's going to fire my employee. No, it's just a message and I can click send and whether it goes to the person to my left or whether it goes to a person in Japan, it's going to get there in less than a second and at no cost because the message is the value. It is all encompassed in one global network. It's the same thing for a Bitcoin payment. It's fascinating in that way. Whether I'm buying coffee, whether I'm remitting money, whether I'm tipping someone on Twitter, whether I'm unlocking a blog post, it's going to settle in less than a second and at no cost. And that's fascinating. Now, I don't advocate spending Bitcoin because it's an asset that's designed to be held and appreciate and store wealth across space and time. Property in Manhattan doesn't have to move for it to have value. The, uh, the granite, if you own a city block in Manhattan, the fact that it hasn't moved in 200 million years doesn't have any impact on, the, on whether it has value. Value. In fact, you would prefer that Manhattan be built on granite or schist that doesn't move for hundreds of millions of years. That actually makes the property more valuable. And Bitcoin is that, right? What you want is you want to know that 100 years from now, there'll be no more than 21 million Bitcoin and that the network will be secure and have integrity and no one can change it. What I'm advocating for is interfacing it with we can move dollars over it. We can move euros over it. We can move game points over it. It's replacing the bifurcated independent payment networks that we know today, Western Union, card networks, transfer. I mean, we can all consolidate onto one open global standard to move value from point A to point B. It's just plain speak better.